everybody, I'm Miss Amber, and today we are continuing our series on the fruit of the Spirit. But before we figure out which one we are covering today, I want to take a couple of minutes to kind of recap what in the world is the fruit of the Spirit. So the fruit of the Spirit isn't apples and oranges and bananas and, you know, all of those wonderful things. Those are really great too, but that's not what we're talking about. We are talking about what is a product of or what is produced by God's Holy Spirit in our lives. Our series verse actually says it best. This is Jesus speaking and he's speaking to his disciples, but he's really also speaking to us. And it's found in John 16, 7. Jesus says, but in fact, it is best for you that I go away because if I don't, the advocate, the Holy Spirit, our helper, won't come. If I do go away, then I will send him to you. Now, because of the Holy Spirit, we are given all of the fruit of the Spirit. Now, I know some of you guys are thinking, Miss Amber, I don't have a lot of love or I don't have a lot of patience or what even is goodness? What's the difference between goodness and kindness? I don't really know. That's okay. We are going to cover that in our series. But most importantly, you guys need to understand that we have access to all of these fruits of the spirit and that there is that battle that's going on between our sinful nature and our new nature. So our Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is our helper and the Holy Spirit is a gift. Now, the moment you've all been waiting for, which fruit of the spirit are we covering today? And it is joy. Now, there's a difference. Some of you guys are like, awesome, happiness, woo! I am like feeling great today, I am full of joy. That's really good, but there's actually a really big difference between happiness and joy. I know, I hate to break it to you, okay? But this is actually pretty good news for us and, and I'll, I'll get to that. See, happiness is amazing, okay? But happiness, really depends on our circumstance. Kind of like if someone hands me an ice cream cone full of mint chocolate chip ice cream, I am happy, okay? But if they hand me an ice cream cone full of broccoli, not so much. They're both green, okay? They're both in a waffle cone, which is delicious, okay? But. <laughs> I'm sorry, parents. I'm not as happy, right, with broccoli, okay? So happiness really depends on our circumstances, but joy, joy is different. Joy can look the same as happiness maybe, but joy is different. Joy comes from believing and standing on God's promises. That brings me to our big answer for today. Our big answer says, I believe God's promises. I believe God's promises. Now, um, sometimes it's hard to have joy in the midst of our situation, right? Um, sometimes our circumstances cannot be great. Sometimes we cannot feel happy, but we can have joy, all right? We can even have joy in bad circumstances once we figure this out. Kind of like uh, Paul and Silas. See, in the Bible, there's this really amazing account of these guys, they were minding their own business and stuff, and um, they actually had a really bad day, but they were full of joy. And you can actually check that out through our epic story of Paul and Silas, if you want, it's really cool. But Paul and Silas knew something really important. They knew that they could have joy because they knew God's promises. They knew that God didn't call them to a place that was going to get them stuck for forever. They knew that they weren't going to be stuck in that jail forever. It actually says in Acts, 16, nine and 10. It actually kind of explains it in God's word, which I love. It says, a vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man from Macedonia, not macadamia. I really want those cookies right now. Okay, so from Macedonia was standing there, urging him and saying, come over to Macedonia and help us. And when Paul had seen the vision, immediately 
didn't pause, immediately we sought to go on into Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. See, when Paul and Silas had that horrible day, they're sitting in jail and they were like, well, this is terrible. It's not like they were like, yay, we got arrested. Yay, these people don't like us preaching about Jesus. No, they're probably kind of bummed. But then they remembered, they remembered God's promises, just like our big answer, right? I believe God's promises. And then they were able to have joy well up on the inside of them. They worshiped, you heard the story. It was incredible, okay? Now, actually, I want you guys to understand something really cool about joy. Joy can well up on the inside of us, but sometimes we don't experience joy or have joy because we put on other things. Kind of like this amazing illustration that we actually have about joy. If you wanna go head over and check that out, you can do so. Now, when we put things on top of joy, it like smothers it, right? That's the problem. The problem is actually not that we don't have joy. We kind of have access to joy all the time. The problem is our emotions. They wanna be the boss. See, if you put on frustration, if you get frustrated about your situation, your circumstance, but then that leads to complaining about your frustration, about your circumstance, okay? About the things you're not so happy about. But then that leads to a bad attitude. And it's like all these layers that are just choking out and making our joy smaller and smaller and smaller until you can't even see it. That's why lots of people are walking around choosing to have a bad attitude. Having a bad attitude keeps you stuck, like wearing a whole bunch of layers of jackets that might be too small. So that's the problem. So what is the solution? The solution is getting back down to that joy by reminding ourselves of God's promises. Like in our memory verse, Nehemiah 8.10. It's really short, but it's really powerful. God's word says that the joy of the Lord is my strength. So when we're feeling like we're not good enough, when we're surrounded by circumstances that aren't great, that might be sad or worrisome, right? Maybe the opposite of joy, we can actually get back down to the joy that we have because it's not our joy, it's the joy of the Lord, right? So we can actually tap into that and be strong. So this week, I have a little challenge for you guys. I want to challenge you to grow the fruit of the spirit of joy in your lives. Not actually maybe even grow it, maybe just uncover it. Maybe it's actually really big in your life, but there's so many layers there from being frustrated, right? Or complaining or having a bad attitude. Remember that that battle or that struggle between our sinful nature and our new nature is always going on but we can grow the fruit of the spirit by going God's way and by letting our new nature win. Now, let's make sure that our heart is good soil by obeying God's word, by spending time in the right environment, worshiping him, talking with him, right? That's kind of like sunlight that our fruit needs. And let's encourage and let's water our new nature by speaking God's word, his promises, over our situation. Remember, the more that we remember to take off those layers of frustration and complaining and bad attitudes, the more of Jesus's joy will grow on the inside of you.